Welcome! We'll be showing you how to navigate build mode and interact with objects. In this world, the player's goal is to reach the trophy on the other side. We'll be using these fallen pillars to build a bridge. As we go through, feel free to take as much or as little time as you need. Everybody learns at a different pace. And with these fundamentals, you are going to be able to bring your imagination to life. It's important to know that there are two ways to experience your creations. Right now, we are in the editable version of the world. But most of your experiences in Horizon up to this point have likely been in a published world. Please note that when visiting your published world, you won't be able to edit. And when editing your world, only people you invite will be able to join you. When you edit a world you have created, there are two distinct modes. You start in preview mode, which allows you to experience your world. But let's start by going into build mode. To do this, look at your right hand and you're going to notice this thumbstick. When you pull down on the thumbstick, it brings you here into build mode. Build mode is where creation ignites. To move and interact with an object, put the pointer of your hand inside of the object. You'll notice a yellow highlight box appear. With the pointer of your hand inside of the object, press and hold down your index finger. You will then be able to move and reposition the fallen pillars. Remember, your middle finger is for moving yourself, and your index finger is for moving objects. Let's use these fallen pillars to build a bridge to the other side. It doesn't need to be symmetrical or aligned, just enough to get us there. Now, let's return to preview mode to try it out. Look on your left hand where you will see a person icon, and when you press forward and hold on the thumbstick, this is going to draw a line with a circle on the end. You can rejoin the world in preview mode wherever that circle is. And if we go back to build mode by pulling down on our right thumbstick, you can see there's a blue character icon. This is a spawn point where people start in the world. By pressing up on the left thumbstick one time, it will respawn you to the world's spawn point. Try going back and forth a few times to get the hang of it. Now, let's return to preview mode to try it out. Look on your left hand where you will see a person icon, and when you press forward and hold on the thumbstick, this is going to draw a line with a circle on the end. You can rejoin the world in preview mode wherever that circle is. And if we go back to build mode by pulling down on our right thumbstick, you can see there's a blue character icon. This is a spawn point where people start in the world. By pressing up on the left thumbstick one time, it will respawn you to the world's spawn point. Try going back and forth a few times to get the hang of it. To move in build mode, reach out and grab. By holding down your middle finger, you can then pull yourself around in the world. It is very important that it is your middle finger. Grabbing with your index finger will be used for something else. I recommend taking it slow at first as you may get disoriented. When grabbing with both hands, moving them closer and further apart, you can zoom out and in, which adjusts the scale of your avatar. The larger you are, the further you will move in the world. You can also rotate your view in the world when grabbing with both hands by pulling one hand closer to your body. Think of this like you were literally grabbing the world and rotating it around you. To move in build mode, reach out and grab. By holding down your middle finger, you can then pull yourself around in the world. It is very important that it is your middle finger. Grabbing with your index finger will be used for something else. I recommend taking it slow at first as you may get disoriented. When grabbing with both hands, moving them closer and further apart, you can zoom out and in, which adjusts the scale of your avatar. The larger you are, the further you will move in the world. You can also rotate your view in the world when grabbing with both hands by pulling one hand closer to your body. Think of this like you were literally grabbing the world and rotating it around you. To move in build mode, reach out and grab. By holding down your middle finger, you can then pull yourself around in the world. It is very important that it is your middle finger. Grabbing with your index finger will be used for something else. 
I recommend taking it slow at first as you may get disoriented. When grabbing with both hands, moving them closer and further apart, you can zoom out and in, which adjusts the scale of your avatar. The larger you are, the further you will move in the world. You can also rotate your view in the world when grabbing with both hands by pulling one hand closer to your body. Think of this like you were literally grabbing the world and rotating it around you. To move in build mode, reach out and grab. By holding down your middle finger, you can then pull yourself around in the world. It is very important that it is your middle finger. Grabbing with your index finger will be used for something else. I recommend taking it slow at first as you may get disoriented. When grabbing with both hands, moving them closer and further apart, you can zoom out and in, which adjusts the scale of your avatar. The larger you are, the further you will move in the world. You can also rotate your view in the world when grabbing with both hands by pulling one hand closer to your body. Think of this like you were literally grabbing the world and rotating it around you. Let's return to build mode and learn a few more ways to interact with objects. To scale an object, grab it using both of your index fingers. Scaling an object changes the size uniformly. When you spread your hands apart while holding down both index triggers, the object will grow, and when moving your hands closer together, the object will shrink. Next to the move arrow, you will see a cube. When you grab the cube and pull, you will be able to directionally scale the object. Using this tool, we can stretch and flatten our default primitives into unique shapes. Over from our scale cube, you will notice a curved arrow. Grabbing the curved arrow allows you to spin the object. Remember, these controls are located on all sides of the object, allowing you to interact and manipulate it in many different ways. From build mode, you can open your build menu by pressing the recessed menu button on your left controller found under your thumbstick. If you point your laser pointer at the header of this or any menu, you can then hold down your index trigger to move the menu around. While the trigger is held down, you can push your thumbstick left or right to enlarge or shrink the menu, and forward or back to reel it in or out. When you are done, you can position the build menu relative to your view, and it will stay there even as you move around. By pressing and holding down the recessed button on your left controller, the build menu will also follow your hand, allowing for easier positioning. From your build menu, on the Shapes tab, you will see the initial primitives we start with. You will be surprised by what you can build with these. You can pull shapes out of the menu with your hand or the laser pointer by pressing down on your index finger. You can also use your laser pointer to scroll through the menu, either by clicking on the menu and pulling, or with the laser pointed at the menu using your thumbstick, press upwards or downwards. Let's go to the Gizmos tab! Gizmos are really powerful, and they're going to enable a whole new level of creativity in your world. We will be diving deeper into Gizmos in a separate tutorial, and I highly recommend you check them out. Gizmos can be pulled out of the menu just like shapes. Under the Sounds tab, we have effects, background, and music. These sound objects are going to allow you to paint your world in 3D auditory immersion. Visitors in your world will be blown away by the sounds of waterfalls, howling wind, and so much more. These can also be scrolled and pulled out of the menu just like shapes. Under the Styles tab, we are able to paint and texture objects. There's a lot to talk about here, and we'll be diving deeper into styles in a separate tutorial. Be sure to check it out! Thank you so much for joining us. Take your time exploring these new tools, and in the next part, we'll be going over build mode settings. I'll see you there!